What's up guys, Mickle here, and today I wanted to show you guys some pretty crazy evidence linking Ripple and XRP to some of the most powerful people in the world. If you enjoy this video, make sure you like it down below. Guys, keep subscribing to the channel. It really helps me so much, and I appreciate every single one of you. Anyway, guys, let's jump right into this video because I think it might blow your mind. Um, so I was scrolling through Twitter, and I actually saw this thinking it was just a spam tweet. Does Elon Musk own XRP? This 1% account holds 17 million XRP, has Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, and Andreessen Horowitz written all over it. And that's kind of when I got a little interested because I knew Elon Musk and Peter Thiel work together. Um, I like both these people a lot. I'm invested in uh, uh, Tesla and uh, Palantir. And then Andreessen Horowitz is one of the big names in crypto. So I decided to look into it. And uh, it, at first I noticed that it holds 17 million XRP, so it's definitely no small account. I don't think this is some spam account. And then we see one deposit made from a uh, name with Musk on it, one deposit name uh, with the name Thiel on it, and one deposit named uh, with injuries and Horowitz on it, 8 million, 3 million, and 6 million XRP, all made in 2017, August 26th. So. First, I want to point out that these were no small transactions at the time of this. Um, XRP was trading for around 20 cents, so all of these were multi-million dollar transactions. And not only that, this was very early on, so it shows that uh, even for these very wealthy people, they didn't have as much money at the time, and um, there's a lot less clarity in crypto. So uh, these are very significant investments and we're definitely not done by some people just trying to mess around with a community. Uh, it would be very one, one very uh, expensive and complex joke, uh, especially for something that probably barely got noticed at the time. Um, so my antenna went up when I saw this because I knew um, Peter Thiel and um, Peter Thiel and Elon Musk uh, were heavily linked together, but I didn't know that Andreessen Horowitz uh, was one of the first investors in OpenCoin alongside Peter Thiel. So this shows OpenCoin was actually Ripple before Ripple was Ripple. And uh, this shows that Andreessen Horowitz and Peter Thiel were obviously extremely bullish on the idea of OpenCoin and XRP uh, long before anyone else. Um, I have a feeling this is because um, Peter Thiel eventually left uh, PayPal, and I think a lot of that had to do with the lack of interoperability, something like PayPal had, and he very quick quickly realized the future was actually in digital currencies uh, rather than uh, siloed payment APIs. Um, yeah, but this is our first link. We see entries in Horowitz, Peter Thiel, first investors in OpenCoin. Uh, Peter Thiel says right here in this video, I'm not going to play it. It's him and Mark Andreessen on stage because they're very good friends. They've been friends for a long time. I think they probably talked and made this investment probably together. And uh, I meant in OpenCoin, but also a uh, this XRP investment. Um, we know also that, uh, let me just remember where I am. Yep. Um, Mark Andreessen and Horowitz, the firm, actually made a second investment in Ripple later on alongside Google Ventures. So just in linking another high profile company to Ripple, Google Ventures, but also Andreessen Horowitz now has two investments, uh, one in OpenCoin, one in Ripple, and also Peter Thiel was also linked to the investment in OpenCoin. Well, we can also link Peter Thiel to Elon Musk because they actually invented X.com together and later um, founded PayPal. Um, there are multiple interviews saying Peter Thiel and Elon Musk were very good friends, although they used to butt heads together. That's what geniuses do. They butt heads. Um, they were very good friends, and uh, they both ended up leaving uh, their baby, PayPal uh, and X.com, to go start different ventures. And both of them also, if this is correct, this is hard to validate, but bought XRP and Peter Thiel was also a massive investor in uh, Ripple. I have a feeling both of them probably left PayPal and X.com because they saw it as really the first step of revolutionizing payments, 
but realized that there was it was still very limited in terms of that there's no actual value moving on the network. It was simply a uh, the first stage of using the internet for payments, but had no native currency. I think both of them very quickly saw the writing on the wall in what Ripple and XRP were going to do, and that's likely how they probably got involved in that project. Um, and I think they're still working on that project, which is crazy enough, and let's get into that part now. So now we see Peter Thiel, uh, Mark Andreessen, Elon Musk, all obviously knew who each other were. Peter Thiel is linked to both of them, Elon to uh, Peter Thiel, and they both all have their names on an account going back to 2017, as well as Peter Thiel and Mark Andreessen publicly, publicly making multiple investments in Ripple. Um, this is just an, a video, you don't need to watch it. Um, this is, I thought was very interesting. I'm gonna play this video for you. Peter Thiel, co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk. Uh, this was planned long ago. PayPal Galact Galactic launched in 2013, the same year as uh, uh, OpenCoin was founded. And uh, the same year Thiel invests in Ripple to build a better Bitcoin internet of value. And let's listen to this. And that's the kind of choice governments like China, India, some of these other countries are going to face. They will either have to shut down telecommunications network and make it illegal for you to own a cell phone, or they will have to basically uh, give up the kind of monetary sovereignty they've had and the enormous power that uh, they've been able to wield as a result of this kind of sovereignty over the last uh, many, many years. Um, and I think, so I think this process is already full fledged. The, the dollarization worldwide is going to be accelerated enormously by the technology. Now, the, the second theme is a little bit more speculative, um, and that is that, that getting rid of money altogether, going from um, digital dollars, from any kind of government backed currency, to purely private currencies. And what, what a private currency, what private money, I think, fundamentally means is that there is no medium of exchange. You think he's talking about XRP here, considering he's invested in OpenCoin? You exchange value for value rather than exchanging value for something the government says has value for value. And whenever you have this intermediate step of the government saying something has value, that's where you have the subterfuge, the sort of legere domain come in, the game of musical chairs where every now and then a chair gets pulled out, and it turns out that you're the one holding a dollar bill that's all of a sudden become worth a little bit less. Um, and the kind of exchange of value for value, you know, the, the classic model would have been some sort of a barter model. That obviously has enormous transaction costs associated with it. These transaction costs go down in a digital age. And the kind of model that I think is the most likely to take place is one where you have other kinds of financial instruments that are very, very liquid. The one I would cite in the UN is it's a disagreement on emphasis, is I don't think the big fights on this are going to be fought in Washington, D.C. I think that, uh, for, and actually it's for all the reasons Richard cited, the people in D.C. are completely backwards. They don't understand any of the technology, and even to the extent they can, it can't be stopped. It, you cannot stop things on the level of Washington, D.C. in terms of shutting down um, these encryption protocols, things like that. Uh, I think it's pretty clear he's talking about cryptocurrencies. I think he's probably talking specifically about Ripple XRP based on the fact that he's invested in it. And like I was saying earlier, I think this is probably one of the reasons him and Elon Musk decided to leave uh, eBay, I mean not eBay, um, PayPal, uh, because like he said right here, um, there's no liquidity in PayPal, it's just a payment API. He talks in this clip about uh, high liquidity assets in, uh, with encryption protocols, which he is invested in one, it's XRP. Um, so what did Elon Musk have to do? Well, in order to create an internet of value, you need internet everywhere, you need connection. Elon Musk goes on to start SpaceX. X is exactly in the name. Uh, and what is SpaceX going to do? They are going to put nodes on satellites in order to create PayPal, uh, the vision of PayPal Galactic, in which nodes are accessible anywhere on Earth or even in space in order to be able to uh, create a XRP, Ripple, 
cryptocurrency financial network that covers the entire world and anyone can access. Um, I think uh, this is just all part of the plan of building out a global infrastructure for payments. And uh, I think this was, uh, this has been planned for a long time and all of these guys are really working out, working together to build out a new future financial system. Uh, remember that Elon Musk and Peter Thiel made their way in payments. It's still a fascinating interest for them. Uh, Elon Musk's brain never turns off. He's not oblivious to XRP. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting that we have XRP, uh, X.com, and now we have SpaceX and their visions all align uh, pretty similarly. Um, this is just kind of random. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. X.com, uh, the old website, now just has an X in the corner and SpaceX uh, going to the same corner of the screen. Maybe just coincidence, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, I'm not gonna play it because this video is already pretty long, but in this clip uh, from Thinking Crypto, um, Brad Garlinghouse actually says that the first time he heard about cryptocurrency was actually from talking to Peter Thiel. Um, I think this was extremely interesting because a lot of us think Brad Garlinghouse is kind of the leader of Ripple, but really Peter Thiel got him into Ripple. Uh, guys, this has been going on for a long time. I have a feeling we're getting close to the end. I really think that's what this SEC lawsuit is. I think it's to bring clarity to XRP and bring it into the main stage. SpaceX is launching satellites. The infrastructure is being built out. The markets are more liquid than they were before. And they're just putting their final chess pieces in place and making sure that XRP has a designated status for the entire world. Also in this clip just happened to be Gary Gensler explaining the utility of XRP. You really think he's trying to kill it? It makes no sense. Um, the last thing I wanted to get into was actually this 2019 article in which I found some insane connections. So make sure you guys stay for this. Uh, connecting Ripple to more of the global elites. And I don't know why that just happened, but let's just jump into this real quickly. And I'll point out the most important people who you guys might not know about. The first one I saw was uh, this lady, Susan Athey, which actually she was a board, she's a board member of Ripple and Microsoft, and she was actually credited for developing the uh, the uh, connection between Ripple and the Melinda Gates Fa and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, in which they're trying to bring uh, accounts to people all over the world, financial accounts. How are they going to do that if places all over the world don't have internet? Oh yeah, maybe SpaceX bringing connectivity to places all over the world, and I have a feeling a couple of these satellites might have a node or two on them. Anyway, let's keep going. We see another pretty interesting person who I didn't know uh, knew about Ripple, and that is a, uh, sorry, Bill Clinton, sorry it's late, and Bill Clinton actually spoke at Ripple Swell, which um, I, I could care less about Bill Clinton, but it shows that Ripple's not a normal startup. They are backed by some of those powerful families in the entire world. Right here, we see Bill Gates, uh, Bill Clinton, and a board member of Microsoft. Um, we also have uh, uh, David Schwartz, who worked for the NSA. Guys, most the NSA is an intelligence agency for the United States. Most people who join the NSA don't leave the NSA. David Schwartz did. He immediately went to go start Ripple. Um, I have a feeling there was a reason for that. I have a reason he was part of a plan to create a better payment system. He is actually the founder of the patent for the distributed ledger uh, network. Uh, yeah, I think enough said on that. If we keep scrolling, we can also link um, Ripple to the Bilderberg Group which is essentially a conference where all the a lot of elites go and multiple people on Ripple's board have been known to go here. Um, we also have this guy right here, and let me get his name real quick, sorry, there was a lot of people in here. Ben Bernanke, he uh, also was a keynote speaker as well, who also happened to be part of the Federal Reserve in 2017, and now we see multiple people from the Treasury joining Ripple, such as Rosie Rios, and uh, another guy who I'm blanking on his name, who is also a 10-year veteran at BlackRock. 
Um, other investors are CME Group, which is a massive clearinghouse in the United States, and the Digital Currency Group. Uh, guys, I don't know how much more obvious you can get at this point. Um, these are some of the most powerful people in the entire world, some of the richest people in the entire world, and smartest, all invested in Ripple and XRP. The connections don't stop. Half of these are just what the public was able to dig up. I'm sure they go much deeper. Make sure you guys like this video. Subscribe, subscribe to this channel. This video took me a while to make. I was digging up a lot of information. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple years. But for now, hodl your XRP and Mickle out.